This is a demonstration of the current state of the um, Sky Viper GPS um, web server, which is running on the Sonics. And uh, it's had a little bit of a enhancement since the last video I did. Um, so to start with, the, the file system access uh, works as before. So you can go and access the, the file system, get down data flash logs, etc. And uh, as before, you can also view live videos. So you can uh, view the videos that you've recorded directly in your browser. Um, back to the main screen, and we'll just have a look at some of the other features. The system control page is now a bit more sophisticated. It has um, more ability to be able to set up Wi-Fi authentication types and Wi-Fi channels and you can toggle the recording of video. You can also start a transmitter bind. You can do a complete factory reset, or you can format the SD card. Then down in the upgrade firmware, the firmware upgrade has now got a little bit of help text to explain to people uh, what they're doing. Uh, when you do an upgrade, it now does a, um, uh, gives you a, a nice status on the, the progress of the upgrade uh, with a little bit of JavaScript and it um, also automatically selects um, files by uh, extension. So we can example, you know, choose IGCopter as they've been there and tell it to upload that file and it'll, it'll upgrade it. So back to the main page. And the part that's had the most enhancement is the system status page, which has now been changed into a tabbed interface. And as you can see, the core information gives sort of flight board status, etc. And then you've got the IMUs. So you can, if I move the board around a little bit, you will see that you get the accelerometers and the gyros and the magnetometer. Uh, you can choose the refresh rate of all of this data. So we can do, say, 6 hertz, and it'll have much smoother graphs. So you can see exactly what's happening to all of the sensors. Uh, then the same under the barometer. You've got uh, the barometer data coming in there. We have the GPS data, including this, the all critical speed, position, height accuracies, which are uh, needed for ArduPilot in order to be able to get a uh, good GPS lock. You need to get the speed accuracy below one, for example. I don't have GPS lock at all in my study at the moment, so that's why it's showing up as a terrible speed accuracy. You also get the EKF status, and because I don't have uh, GPS and I haven't calibrated, um, the EKF has currently got no flags set. Um, these flags, of course, should be broken out, showing and explaining what they are, but at least uh, a developer can see what's happening. Uh, the transmitter state, uh, you can see all of the transmitter channels moving like that. You can see the number of packets per second being received from the transmitter. And you can see the RSSI strength, so signal strength from the transmitter. Then we have the camera view. So this gives you a, a live view of the camera. And uh, you can adjust the frame rate as you can with the other ones. So if I now point this camera like that, then I can wave and uh, you can see exactly what's what's happening through the video. So that will allow people to, um, to test their cameras more easily. Um, the, uh, the video will scale appropriately um, as you size it. So it'll scale appropriately for the type of device that you're connected to. All right, so that's uh, basically it as far as the, the current state. And um, there's uh, obviously a few more features that are needed. Magnetometer calibration and accelerometer calibration would be very useful, I think, particularly guiding the user um, towards um, correct calibration by showing a rotating vehicle. And uh, I think it would also be good to have full parameter control over the ArduPilot parameters and NVRAM control over the Sonics NVRAM and then a, a full um, Mavlink graphing system, I think, would be very handy as well. Right, but uh, that's enough for now.